it's time to ask the chief here on News 4 Today. And today it's D.C. Police Chief Pamela Smith joining us in the studio live. Yes, there's a lot to talk about, a lot to cover. Uh, first, we want to say thank you for getting up early, joining us in studio this morning. Uh, we want to talk about first the story that uh, popped up over the weekend, uh, of course, uh, in the Shaw neighborhood. There were seven people shot, two mm -hmm. of them killed right at 7th and P. Uh, you know, we saw some home surveillance video that's been shared uh, uh, that we aired here on News 4. But what have your detectives been able to learn from maybe surveillance cameras? And was there any indication these people knew each other? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. <clears throat> and thank you for asking those questions. Um, what we found up to this point is that uh, we do realize that, that was there, they were a group of individuals that did know each other. Um, so it was intentional. Uh, we don't want, the, did not, do not want the public to assume that this was some random act. Um, they were coming out of a nightclub. Um, there was an altercation that ensued between those individuals. We are still currently working to, um, to, to obtain the most the best video footage that we can push out to the public. What we are asking the public is that if they know anything, to please contact the Metropolitan Police Department. Um, they can remain an anonymous, 50411, um, so that we can obtain any information that may be out there. That includes videos, um, any witness account, uh, uh, visual witness account of the incident. We're certainly seeking any information that we can find from the public. Mm -hmm. That, that shooting aside, it's been a tough couple of years in the district for crime, uh, but crime has actually been trending downward early this year. Uh, we know there was a spike last year, murders, carjackings were up. At one point, Mayor Bowser referred to last year as a, a blip, an aberration. Uh, was it a blip or have there been some real changes in approach to bring those numbers down? Well, I think there are, there are significant uh, changes with regards to bringing the, the crime down. Currently, right now, we sit at negative 32 percent in our homicide. Um, our assault with deadly weapons is negative 23 percent. Even our carjackings are down negative 21 percent. And our overall crime here in the District of Columbia is negative 12 percent. And I attribute that to some of the initiative that we launched last year. Uh, we started um, Operation Atlas, which is kind of a mobile force unit where we look at our crime data over the last uh, seven days. We look at all of the data, um, intelligence-led data, to ensure that we are uh, uh, assigning our officers in the appropriate locations. Mm -hmm. And then we stood up a homicide reduction partnership plan. We usually work on a crime initiative, a summer crime initiative mm -hmm. plan. I thought that in order for us to get ahead of crime, we should start that a lot earlier. And so what you're seeing right now is really, really, it's twofold. One, our officers are in the right place doing the things that we've asked them to do. The second piece is that we have an ecosystem now that I believe is working. Uh, I applaud Mayor Bowser and Brooke, Council Member Pinto for uh, presenting and also uh, applaud the council for signing mm -hmm. off on Secure DC because that has been instrumental also, will be instrumental also as we continue to drive crime down. They should both be applauded uh, for, for pushing that legislation through because it is going to be instrumental in helping us solve crime here in the District of Columbia. Yeah, a moment ago you brought up the summer. We're going to ask you about that in just a second. First, though, I want to talk about another tool uh, that is trying to get uh, up and running yes. here for your disposal, this new command center that you all kind of talked about a few weeks ago, real-time cameras, resources with other local agencies. We know it's a little bit delayed, right? Yeah. So what can you tell us? When will it be online, and how will that command center be able to help you and your entire police force? So it's a real-time crime incident. I'm glad you asked about it. So what I will say is that we are already operating in that space. Okay. Um, we're working, waiting on a piece of technology that will allow us to be fully operational. I mean, as you know, sometimes technology can be a little delay and it's just mm -hmm. taking us a little bit longer. We're expecting to have that technology um, um, within the next two weeks. Okay. Um, and once we get it within the next two weeks, we plan to do a, 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 an, another announcement around how people, the public, can uh, integrate their cameras into the real-time crime center. Mm -hmm. um, we are already operating, like I said, uh, in, in a, on a very small scale. But to be fully operational, we really need that piece of technology to support us in that space. Um, I'm excited about the Real-Time Crime Center, more so excited about the fact that we have a significant number of partners, uh, federal, local, and state partners, who will also join us in that space. And what you know is that there are no jurisdictional boundaries about how criminals commit crime. Right. And so we, are already be, we have already been working in tandem with them prior to the launch of the Real-Time Crime Center. But what this will do is co-locate us all in the same space in order for us to, to, to address crimes on both sides of our jurisdictional lines. Mm.
Mm-hmm. All right. You mentioned the crime bill mm-hmm. uh, uh, passed by the D.C. Council last month. I want to talk about some of the specifics. One of the things included was allowing you to declare drug-free mm-hmm. zones. Those are places where you can temporarily step up enforcement. The first three of those drug-free zones have been in place since last Thursday. They actually expire at 8 a.m. this morning. That is correct. Uh, do you have a sense of what kind of results you've seen so far, and when can we expect to see more of those zones rolled out? So what I can say is that the public is obeying the law. (laughs) And I think that's really critical about this. We have not had to affect any arrest in that area. And and that was not our intent to begin with. We've heard from the community. The community has told me on many occasions, we want our corners back. We want our spaces back. And this is an opportunity. This law had been in place before. Um, It was repealed. We're just doing something. We're using a tool that we already had accessibility to. And so it's been going great. I've physically been out to the locations, both in uniform and outside of uniform. We will be launching another, declaring another two areas um, in our fourth district and our fifth district on uh, Thursday. Um, And then I plan to declare some other areas across the District of Columbia relatively soon. Mm -hmm. I hear the public when they say they want their communities back, and it's our responsibility as a public safety entity in order to do that. And this bill, this law, will help us do that. Okay. Uh, So I want to talk about the summer because we're, uh, you know, just a few weeks away now uh, (laughs) from schools being out. Temperatures go up. Mm-hmm. You know, historically, we've seen crimes, you know, sometimes go up when people are outside uh, acting amongst each other, maybe mm-hmm. more in the summertime. So what kind of plans are you putting in place right now to deal with um, the summer, specifically when we're talking about youth crime, especially yeah. when, you know, more of our young people are out of school and maybe might be getting into some trouble? And so when you, when you think about uh, the this, this summer, we've already started working. I mean, I, my, my plan to my team was that we can't wait until the summer, which I think is indicative of why you see some of the numbers going down. Down. And then also, you know, the courts are holding some of these folks that we are arresting. But, uh, but when we think about the summer and our young people, we need to make sure that our young people have a lot more activity to do. We have a Youth and, Fa- youth and Family Engagement Bureau. We're connecting very closely with our Department of Parks and Recs to ensure that our recreational centers are available for our youth to kind of cohabitate and hang out in. But more importantly, we have to posture ourselves to ensure that we get ahead of that. And that means we have to have an all-of-government approach in order to address what we're dealing with in crime. And that's what I applaud me. Bowser on since I've been in this space. She looks at the entire ecosystem in order for us to address public safety. And when I think about the summer, I'm not worried about the summer because we're, we're already at summer. When I think about mm-hmm. what this, this this past week, um, I was out at the ACC tournament. There were hundreds and thousands of people out across the District mm-hmm. of Columbia. I also spent a lot of time walking in different places across the, across D.C. We had the Rock and Roll Marathon. There were many people here. I hosted a, a women's conference with over 500 women from across the United States here in the District of Columbia. We have protests and demonstrations that are going on all the time. We are prepared to address our summer months with regards to our young people Mm -hmm. as well as crime in the District of Columbia. And I'm very excited about what our summer is going to bring. We are still thriving. The culture of D.C. is still where it was many years ago. What I want people to know is that you have a public safety team that is very passionate about uh, reducing crime, and we're not going to wait until the summer to do that. We're starting right now. All right. Let's talk quickly about recruitment. This is mm-hmm. something else that's been an issue. Sure. Uh, really, not just in D.C., but across the country, Absolutely. police departments are having a problem uh, attracting good candidates. Um, where do your numbers stand right now? Where do you want them to be? How's the whole recruiting thing going? Well, my numbers right now are 3,323 officers. What I can say is this, is that since I've been in this space for eight months, we've been stable. We have not lost uh, a significant number of officers, so that's a good thing for us. Um, our numbers right now are, are, are really not where I would like for them to be. We would love to have 4,000 officers. What I did do was launch an in-person recruitment team that is responsible for recruiting here in the District of Columbia and outside across the United States. Um, last week, I attended a, at the FBI National Executive Institute with over uh, 40 or 50 chiefs and executives from across the United States. We're all experiencing the same thing when it comes to recruitment. My job is to recruit anyone who is who is looking forward to becoming a member of the Metropolitan Police Department. I invite you to come to our website at joinmpd.dc.gov. We are hiring. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, I see it as a city resident. I'm seeing more officers, and I know my, my neighbors appreciate it. So, yes, ma'am. thank you. Yeah, thank All right. you. We appreciate you coming in. Thank uh, you for no, it's all very early in the morning, though. You said you were at roll call an hour <laughs> and a half ago. Five so. o'clock in the morning. Right. I was at roll call right. with my officers. Well, D.C. Police Chief Pamela Smith, thank you very much for coming Absolutely. in. We appreciate thank you for the having time. Me. Hopefully, we'll see you again. All Absolutely. Right.